for fantasy, I feel like these bitches always look the same. So I'm like, who are you? Who are you? Um, who knows? And I am actually, I'm actually really enjoying it. What? I'm a We need something to spice it up. Let's mention the serial killer whose some of his killings happen at the same time as the world there. Hello friends! We have one cat. We have another cat. Can you even see him? I think you can. You can see his ass. I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. Welcome back. It is time. It is time for episode three of booktube twin test so if you don't know this is a series i do where i ask a booktuber that you guys have said you think i have a similar reading taste to i ask them for three books that they have loved for book recommendations i read those books and it is a competition <laughs> and in the first two episodes of this i did it with books and lala and riley marie and Kayla had 13 points and Riley had 12.5. So it has been a close run competition so far. They've given me some good recommendations. The booktuber I've asked this time is one that four of you said. So previously, <laughs> Kayla and Riley were ones that loads of you have said. And then I didn't want to just keep doing like the ones that most people have said. I wanted to like choose some booktubers that, that intrigue me, you know, that make me think, huh? Why have you said that? So the booktube I've chosen for this edition is Aaron from Booked and Busy. So I love Aaron. Aaron is one of my favorite booktubers. I absolutely love her videos. But I never thought of us like as having a similar reading taste necessarily. I mean, I like fantasy, she loves fantasy, but I don't know, I've just never thought of us as having the same reading taste. So I really wanna put that to the test this video. I'm really excited to see what she's gonna recommend. My guess is a lot of fantasy, but she may, recommend maybe more mysteries that she's enjoyed because she knows that's what I enjoy or may kind of adjust what she recommends to me. So I really don't know, but it's time to go ahead and watch the video that Aaron has sent me recommending me books. Hi Megan. Hello. I am very surprised to find myself here as a contestant on Booktube Twin Test, but I asked myself, do I want Megan to read my favorite books or do I want to win? <laughs> and of course the answer is that I want to win. So. Not the I've done something that may be cheating. Okay. And if it is cheating, I'm gonna go with a backup plan. Okay. So I'm actually gonna recommend you four books. Okay. Um, okay. And I guess we'll read three. And we're gonna get to why in just a second. Okay, 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 have okay. a cunning reason <laughs> behind all of my selections. So let's get into it. The first one, mm -hmm. um, I feel like is a is not a book you would expect or anyone would expect me to recommend but i think it's a private recommendation for you because it is a book that i loved and i gave five stars okay. and it has some of your favorite things murder mayhem lost women true crime ooh, 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 ooh. and even better it's a non-fiction so my what? first recommendation is the devil in the white <gasps> city by no. Eric Larson. Ooh. this was one of my Best book of 2020, the only nonfiction to make How that exciting. list. exciting, oh my god. This is a story about the Chicago World's Fair and H.H. Oh. Uh, H. Holmes, I'm so excited. the serial yes. killer. In this book, we follow, it's nonfiction, but it reads like fiction. And I also highly recommend the audiobook okay. for this. I oh had a fantastic experience um, and it's told in two parts. And one is from the point of an architect, yes. architect who is trying to, oh. you know, bring about the Chicago World's Fair. I had no interest in architecture, but I was riveted the entire time. And then we also follow H.H. H. Holmes on his rise to infamy. My second oh my book is another book that I don't think people would expect me to recommend here okay when giving what? people the power to read things Aaron i think people crazy. expect certain things from me but this is a book that warmed my heart that i enjoy so much that's outside of my usual but that i gave five stars it has dark academic elements Ooh. it's a mystery Ooh. it um is just very fun and it's also a middle grade. So my second choice is going to be the mystery of Black I've Halloween. I've never heard of that in my life. I know that you're a fan of mystery. It's your favorite genre. I know that you like middle grade. Heard of that. I know we had similar ratings for Martin and the Night Brothers. And I think that you're gonna love this. This is the only middle grade that I've given five stars five in star? my adulthood, oh my and the setting the is just perfect for this time of year. Um, and I think you're gonna love. We follow our main character Lola. This is not what I was expecting is, uh, at all. I was expecting to be reading something very different. And before she gets there, she finds these mysterious things about the academy that her father left to her. And when she gets there, she finds out that her father may have been into more than she imagined, even though she hadn't seen him since what? she was 
three. So my next choice is here's where it comes in, where it's cheating, maybe. I don't think it's cheating, but you know, house rules. So okay, off to the um, side. Like this is where it came down to, do I wanna win and do I wanna be nice? Well, really just do I wanna win <laughs> or do I wanna be risky? So I have chosen to recommend you a book that I did not like at all. No, but I read. You like. I and read. The goal was to beat Kayla and beat Riley. So I wanna go with that. No. So that book is, Oh. I know that you really, really enjoyed book one. Yes, and I did. I am a fan of Marathon series. I um, know that you're stuck in the middle of quite a few series right. and making some progress with this. We'll probably end up with you reading the last book before the year is out. <laughs> so you're out. welcome. Oh uh, I gave this book two stars because it was right. more like the half of the popular. We'll see what book the other recommendation is. I don't think we'll be reading this. This is pretty likely to get a good good rating from you. Okay. So this well. is my choice. Now, <laughs> if for some reason you feel like that's cheating. I think it is. Okay, I'm going to give you a fourth option. Okay. And this is a book that I gave five stars. Okay, okay? we'll read this. And that is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hood. No. Now, I thought about this one and I was going to recommend this one to you. I was like, hmm, she's going to be starting a new series. Uh, and you're already in the middle of so many series. And I love this book, but it's very sad and depressing. But it's a perfect read for the no. summer year. I read it in the spring, in the beginning of quarantine. So sad and depressing season. But this book is fantastic. I love it. This um, is one of my favorite characters so. of all time. This writing, this story is beautiful. So. And it's going to stay with me forever. Uh, in this book, we follow our main character, Fitzgerald Farseer, who is I the best I do not think I'll be reading this book reigning. anytime soon. He eventually gets trained into being an assassin because he can move through both worlds as the son of a noble. I absolutely love this book. Gave this five stars. So here are my three official recommendations <laughs> and if you know the house rules determine that i am cheating here is what i am recommending to you best of luck and i can't wait to get my booktube twin test <laughs> i think that's cheating <laughs> the rules don't apply but Here's the thing. I would rather read The Dragon Republic, right? I want to make progress in that series. I really love The Poppy War and then I haven't made progress because I do find those books intimidating, The Dragon Republic and The Burning God. I own them both, but I think it's cheating. The whole purpose of the series is to read books that they have loved to find if we are twins. So I am going to read Assassin's Apprentice in this video. I feel like that's the whole point of the video. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to read The Mystery, the middle grade, can't remember what it was called, The Devil in the White City and The Assassin's Apprentice. Now I don't want to read Assassin's Apprentice. <laughs> but we're going to do it because I think that fits, you know, the idea of the video. I think I'm probably going to start with the middle grade once I get my hands on it because I'm kind of in the mood for like a middle grade mystery. The way that Aaron described it got me very excited. So I think we're going to start with that one. And oh my God, this is such a crazy selection. This is not, apart from Assassin's Apprentice is kind of the kind of thing I expected, but the other two aren't. So I'm very excited to read some mystery. I did not think I'd be getting to do that. And yeah, I'll chat to you in a bit. saw were from it was mine and Tom's five year anniversary the other day and um, we went out for a nice lunch which I didn't film I forgot but I remembered to film a bit of our walk and we went on a really nice walk together and the like the it, autumn is like right at its end so like all the trees I don't know if the the clips captured it well enough but like all the trees were so gold and orange and gorgeous it was absolutely stunning I had the best time but about the book I am <laughs> I am about halfway through The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Nobel and I'm really enjoying it it took me a hot second to get into it because this is a middle grade but it reads as quite a young middle grade in my opinion like it's like a young 
middle grade young middle grade so for a moment i was like i just don't know if it's quiet for me you know what i mean but as it's gone on i've gotten more into it so we're following emmy who is american but her mother is like this really well-known kind of like parent guru and uh she's like i'm too busy with my show that i've got to film so she sends emmy off to this private school in england and i think it's actually near norfolk which you don't know i support norwich <laughs> city football club who are in norfolk and like there's a bit where she like goes to Kings Lynn on a, like on a trip and like the way that Kings Lynn is romanticized it just it just made me laugh it was very funny me recognizing all the places talked about and knowing what they're really like She meets her two friends. She's got this really like tight group of friends there and they're trying to solve this mystery of kind of the history of the school and how her dad, who she hasn't seen since she was three, may be wrapped up in it. And I'm really enjoying it. It's like a fun, simple kind of mystery middle grade. I'm really I'm really excited to read more in this series as well. I really like the, the characters. I think they have a really kind of pure, kind friendship with one another. But yeah, I think Aaron was completely right as well when she said that like, it's perfect for this time of year. There is this kind of like, dark academia-ness to it like it's all about this old school with this like dark history to it and I'm really enjoying like them and uncovering it and trying to figure out like the history of the school and it's like a boarding school right so they like live there it has that nostalgic boarding school dark academia middle grade feeling which I really really enjoy do you want to come say hello hi how you doing hi my name is Aura she says no Megan I don't really want to see her now, thank you. She was very f***ing rude. Weren't she? But yes, very intrigued to see where it's going to go. I feel like the mystery has kind of started being laid. We've got a great kind of Scooby gang of friends. I'm just really enjoying it. That's all I really have to say. It's not like a five star right now. I mean, no, it, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be a five star. I'm going to go to the gym now and then I'm going to come back and hopefully finish this tonight. So I'll either speak to you tonight or in the morning about kind of my final thoughts about it. But um, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. Feeling in my bones. I could feel it in my veins Hands in the sky I can feel the winds of change You live and you learn And I hope I've seen enough Okay, I have finished The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane and I'm gonna give it three stars. What the hell are you playing at? It's gonna be a three star. I'm sorry, Aaron! <laughs> I feel so much more pressure in these videos when I'm rating these books because this converts to points for that booktube and I feel, I feel guilty. But anyway, I enjoyed it on the whole, but the ending, it just didn't do it for me. Okay, here's the thing, it's a middle grade. I recognize it's a children's book and I'm not out here with unrealistic expectations for what it should do. So I obviously felt like it was predictable, but that's, a children's book doesn't have to be predictable. Do you know what I mean? And I felt like it was very over explained and I just didn't love it as much. When I last checked in with you, I kind of expected it to kind of improve and it didn't improve for me. Like at the ending, there's this big explanation for why everything happened and how everything happened and I just don't vibe like I don't want that I don't care I don't care what age range it is I don't care I don't want that I mean all I can do is be honest with my feelings because Aaron mentioned Amari and the Knight Brothers right and how I loved that when recommending this book and Amari didn't do that or like it kind of had a moment like that but it was done so well like Amari was clever it's such a clever children's book and I don't think me saying this wasn't like clever enough or it was too like the language wasn't quite what I liked I'm not saying like it should be like adult bros and I'm saying that I am viewing it through the lens of a middle grade I want to make that clear I was a bit disappointed towards the end of it I think I'll still carry on with this series although I may just listen to the audio books I may not like 
collect it physically. But I feel like I haven't got much to say. Like it was just, it just got on my nerves a bit at the end and I felt like it wasn't complex enough and I was a bit bored towards the end. Do you know what I mean? However, I will say I really enjoyed football in this. I love football. If you don't know, I support Norwich. The main character loves, oh, she calls it soccer. But... And I really loved like seeing that. And like, I always love books that talk about football, particularly girls playing football. That's like a bit of a niche that I really enjoyed. So that I did really love. I loved the setting, but I, I felt like the characters weren't it. Like, I feel like I'm gonna keep comparing it to Amari and the Night Brothers just so we have like a point of reference. But the characters, like even the adult figures in Amari and the Night Brothers were so like vivid and interesting and layered. And I didn't feel like these were. So next, we're gonna read Assassin's Apprentice, which I'm terrified for. Like, I'm literally mildly terrified for this. I'm not gonna lie to you. But first, I thought we could unbox Fairy Loot together. Fairy Loot makes me think of Aaron because Aaron unboxes Fairy Loot too. So I feel like this works. This is, I think this is the October box? I think this is gonna be the October box. Like, I've always loved Fairy Loot. So let's show you what we've got this. Oh my God, this is what the book what is our theme for this month oh broken heart okay what is this <laughs> oh my god what is that oh it's a kingdom of the wicked blanket oh my god this blanket is so soft blankets are such a good book box hang on whoa it's like a blanket of a snake over this sword can you see that i hope you can see that but, oh my god, that is so soft. Next, we've got Once Upon a Broken Heart character cards. Okay. Oh, wow. There are loads. They weren't kidding. There's loads of these. I always love... These are so beautifully designed. But I... When we get these, I can never tell you... I mean, I know Once Broken Heart has only just come out. But I can never tell you, like, who's who. Like, I don't know what characters look like for the life of me. I have no idea. Is anyone else just unable to, like, envisage characters? Like, if it's for a book I've read and I see, like... Unless it's really obvious, like for fantasy, I feel like these bitches always look the same. So I'm like, who are you? Who are you? Um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Then, oh, we've got a trinket tray designed by Ars28. Oh, inspired by Addy LaRue. Oh, this is pretty. I do love a good trinket tray. Look how cute that is. I'm gonna have to put that on my bookshelf. I really love that. Wow, I do love their trinket trays. That is so cute. Where should I put that? We have got a postcard inspired by We Set the Dark on Fire. And then we've got the tarot cards this month inspired by Ray Bearer. Okay, let's look and see what the book is going to be. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I don't know what it is. <gasps> I just saw pink. I love pink. Okay, 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 okay. No. It's embarrassing. But she's beautiful. Right. Stunning. <laughs> but she's beautiful. <laughs> look, look, look at that gorgeous art. Oh my God. <gasps> wow. Okay. And then, oh my God, get out. Get out. No, no, I can't take it. I can't. The Ballad of the Archer and the Fox. No. And then look at the art on the inside of the dust jacket. I actually, I am deceased. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Oh my God. Fuck. I actually want to cry. This is gorgeous. This is up there as one of my favorite books I've received from Fairy Loot this whole year. What? It is so gorgeous. I mean, get out. I mean, I'm fed up. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, I love it. Okay, so this is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, which I've heard a lot of my patrons have actually been talking about how much they've been excited for this. A beautiful story about love curses and the lengths that people go to for a happily ever after. Look at this cover. I can't get over the cover. Okay, it's gorgeous. Listen, you guys need to just go check out Fairy Loot down below. I will always just love Fairy Loot. I cannot get over how gorgeous this edition is. Like, it is absolutely stunning. It is stunning. So I will leave Fairy Loot link down below. I absolutely love this. So anyway, it is now time for me to go read Assassin's Apprentice. I'm going to try and read almost the whole thing today. I have the audiobook. I need to do a few more work bits, but then I need to just focus on this. This is going to be my sole focus for the rest of today. I'm nervous. I'm nervous but I'm excited. I'm hoping I'm gonna love it but like am I? 
we shall see. I am 108 pages into Assassin's Apprentice and I am actually, I'm actually really enjoying it. What? I'm a <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. I actually can't believe, I'm actually going a bit red. Um, <laughs> I can't believe how much I'm actually enjoying this. I was thinking to myself, I cannot remember the last time I read an adult high fantasy. I can't, I can't remember. I looked back on Goodreads and the last two things I would class as like high fantasy that I've read were both YA. But I actually can't remember the last time I read an adult high fantasy, which is like a completely different reading experience, right? It's a bit more clever. It's a bit more like there's so many um, layers to it. There's so many different elements to it and relationships and politics. And I like, I can't remember I read the last time I read a book like this and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, really enjoying it. So basically in this, we're following a child named Fitz, who is the illegitimate son of the prince in waiting who eventually abdicates because of this scandal, not abdicate, I don't know if it's the right word, but like steps out of line to become king um, because of this scandal. And we're following Fitz as he kind of grows up in the kind of like royal circle, it's called the keep. So he lives in kind of the area that they all live. He's being looked after by one of the prince's men, like the pre prince's previous men, but he's also starting to be kind of trained by different people. That's not a spoiler, is it? Yes, okay, he's being trained as an assassin. <laughs> Wait, the title is Assassin's Apprentice. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, so he's being trained as an assassin, but that's only really just started. Like, we have a lot of him growing up and kind of, it seems like he has magical powers that we don't really know much about yet, but he particularly has, like, an affinity with animals and, um, kind of connecting with them, but it's something that the people in his life are trying to dissuade him from doing. Anyway, all that to say, I'm really enjoying it. I feel like... I love being in a fantasy world like this. It's reminding me a lot of, this is YA, but Girl of Fire and Thorns, I think it's called. It's a book I read ages ago. It's like a very old, not very old, but it's an older YA fantasy. I did a read along with Nicole from Nicole and her book. She ran it um, and I co-hosted it and we read the series. I have, oh, can you see that? Yeah, Empire of Dreams is the new, that came out last year, I think. That's like a spin-off of the series. But I really loved that series. Like in a way that, I haven't necessarily connected to a lot of other YA series fantasy, especially that's older. And it's kind of reminding me of it. It's got similar kind of like political maneuverings vibes, obviously in an adult version. And here's the thing, I was so nervous to read this book. Like I was very nervous because it is so widely loved, but I am really enjoying it. Like Aaron is kind of, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I wasn't expecting to be enjoying it this much. Just like I am enjoying reading a book in this tone of voice, kind of this, you know, you know what I mean, in like adult fantasy tone of voice. I haven't read anything like that in a long time. It's a slower pace. You know, you get the sense that this is the start of this entirely expensive world that Robin Hobbs books are. Now, Aaron did say it's sad and I'm not ready for that because I am feeling quite attached to Fitz as a character. He's very endearing, I think. I, I like being in his head. So all that to say, I'm really enjoying it. I am just going to read today. Like, that's basically all I need to do. I've got a few other, like, ad mini bits I need to do. Um, maybe if I have time, I'll start editing this video. That's not happening. All right. And I've got the gym at two. But other than that, I just want to read. So um, yeah, I have the audiobook, which is helping me read along. But yeah, it's actually, like, I'm surprisingly really enjoying it. I'm still reading 
Princess and the Apprentice. I'm on page 250. I'm still really enjoying it. It's a really enjoyable read. I would not be reading it this quick if it wasn't for the audiobook though. I will say that. I will give it that. The one thing I would say <laughs> is if you go into this thinking, I didn't go into this with, with this kind of assumption, but if you do, don't. Don't go into it with the assumption that like, oh, you know, it's, it's a book about an assassin. It's like, action pack like it's not like this is a slow burn book like it's probably the most like non-actiony assassin book to ever exist like <laughs> listen it's one of those books where you read and you go okay robin hobb can write like i just need to like robin hobb can write it's got that kind of classical fantasy kind of tone it's got so much depth to it um and you just have to like bow down to robin hobbs like excellence but i really love the characters my favorite character is Bur burich burich i really like him sometimes fitz is like he's so mean to me <laughs> he likes to control me but i don't know i really like him i think he's funny and he's caring and he's an interesting character he's my favorite character so far my only problem with this kind of book and i have this problem a lot in fantasy is like does this feel like a book in its own right i don't know do you know what I mean? Because it really does feel like it's setting up this um, ma massive series that Robin Hobb is going to go on to have, which is is what happens. You know, Robin Hobb, I don't know. I don't want to know how many books Robin Hobb has that are in this series. I don't, hang on. I mean, come on. It's ridiculous. I mean, whoa. I'm not looking at it anymore. Let's just uh, forget about that, shall we? <laughs> Could you just cut that out? <laughs> so like, does this feel like a book in its own right? It feels like the, the start of the movie or the first episode of the first series. Do you know what I mean? So that is something that annoys me. I do like my books to feel like a self-contained story that really has like a full arc to it. And this just kind of feels like the setting up of what's gonna happen. But I'm I'm still enjoying it. Like I'm literally reading this in the whole day. I think I, I started it this morning and I will probably, I've only got about like two hours left of the audiobook. Um, so I'm hoping to finish it tonight. It's still really enjoyable. I love the political maneuverings. That's my favorite thing in fantasy when it's like all this political, you know, court kind of intrigue and, and conflict. So yeah, like I'm enjoying it, but I wish these kind of epic fantasy series, like I do like them to feel like their own book that has its own identity. And I don't necessarily feel that with this, but I am still enjoying it. It is gonna get a pretty high rating, I would say. On the graves in the cracks of a thousand leaves, somewhere in between, our past and our future rolling over. Okay, I have finished Assassin's Apprentice. I just had sprints on my patrons reading the sprints and I finished it in it and I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it four stars. Now, here's the thing. It's another fantasy series on my roster that I'm currently reading, but I really enjoyed it. I really loved, like I said, the slow burn of kind of understanding Fitz and getting to know Fitz and, um, you know, his life and all the political elements of it. I love political court maneuverings, drama. Like I love that in a fantasy. The fantasy and the magic kind of took a back seat in this book and I don't mind that. I actually usually quite enjoy that because I don't know, I just like like all the sneakiness and people like trying to get what they want and stuff. The one thing I will say is <laughs> whenever anyone, hang on, I've got, I just ate a hobnob. I've got loads of shit in my teeth, hang on. Apologies. If you see anything in my teeth, let's not talk about it. The one thing I will say is whenever anyone pictures this book, I'm pretty sure Aaron said this as well, like they say, oh, it's so sad. Oh my God, you're gonna cry. Not a single tear, not a single tear. And we all know I'm very susceptible to crying when I read a book. Like I will cry at the top of the hat. And I'm like, you guys were crying? Like <laughs> what part were we crying at? Like there's moments where sad things happen, but I can't imagine them making you cry. I just don't think I felt attached enough to the characters. So that's why it's not a five star. I don't think I was very uh, attached. Like there were moments that were sad. Like I was like, oh no, like, oh, that's sad. But like, I wasn't, I mean, everyone in the years was like gonna cry at that. And listen, I'm not stone hearted. I cried anything. 
Like usually I will cry at stuff people don't cry at. That's like kind of the only downside for me, but I really love the slowness of it. And I'm very excited to like read this whole fantasy series. It's gonna take me until I'm 50. Like if we're realistic. I know some people have read like the whole thing. Like Nicole is very far through. Nicole I think is on like the Tawny Man trilogy or maybe even further than that. It will take me a long time, but I, I am excited to continue on with it. And I really enjoyed reading Robin Hobbs writing for the first time. So I would deem this a success. It now means means that Aaron is on seven points total so I don't think she can even beat Riley. Aaron is gonna come in third place <laughs> of the episodes we've done so far but it's okay because I am enjoying it like we haven't had any duds. Honey you've got a big storm coming. Yeah even if this is five stars that will mean only 12 points and I believe Riley Riley got 12.5 if I'm remembering correctly I could be wrong but anyway we're gonna start the devil in the white city next now this is long which is a little bit intimidating for me like it's quite long this non-fiction and I haven't read non-fiction in a hot minute like in a long time all I know about this is we're following the serial killer and an architect around at the time of the Chicago World Fair so yeah I'm gonna go start it now and I'll check in with you probably when I'm about halfway because it's a non-fiction. I don't think there's going to be like loads for me to say about my opinion of it. I... No! <laughs> so, so, so everyone, um, I'm very bored. <laughs> it's like having a job working 24-7 for two days on the trot. I look like a mess. I've just started my period. The bloating is real. Let's... Okay. I feel rough, first of all, which could be colouring my experience of this, but I don't feel like it is, but it may be. So take everything I'm saying with like a grain of salt. I am bored as fuck. I don't want to DNF this book. I just, I am, I want to DNF it, but like that's harsh for a booktube twin test. If it wasn't booktube twin test and there wasn't, you know, points in the, in the, in the balance of this, I probably would just DNF it. And I never DNF. I hate DNFing for videos at all in general, but I'm so bored you guys. So we have many problems here. We have many problems with this book. First of all, this is a non-fiction book about the 1893 Chicago World Fair and a serial killer who operated in Chicago around the same time <laughs> and killed lots and lots of women and got away with it for a very long time because of like, you know, how transient people were at the time, how easy it was to disappear, stuff like that. If this was just a book about the World Fair, would any of us be reading it? Would any of us be reading it? The answer is no. The answer is no. No one on booktube would have picked this book up because the serial killer element is a bit that's interesting. The true crime bit is a bit that's interesting. But this poor guy, <laughs> this author, you can tell it's abundantly clear. He just wanted to write a book about the Chicago World Fair. Like that is what he cares about. Cause that is where all the research is. That is where kind of the majority of the book is. And I feel like his editor was like, we need something to spice it up. Let's mention the serial killer whose some of his killings happened at the same time as the world there. And he used his hotel to lure people in at the time that happened. But he also killed way before it and after it. So like, it's not really linked, but let's make that tenuous, tiny link. Like the link between these two men and these two stories is like, like it's minuscule. It is minuscule. And I think for me, a big problem is that I know about both of these topics. Like this is what's crazy is that I'm not enjoying it because I already know a lot of this stuff and so I'm kind of bored. But like it should be things I'm interested in, but I don't feel like either of the stories are really going into that depth, that much depth. I feel like it's all kind of like surface level stuff. Like I've watched videos about the Chicago World Fair before because it's kind of the, it's the kind of history I'm interested in. I think Defunct Land, if I remember correctly, did a really good video about the Chicago World Fair. And I've watched many videos on H.H. Holmes, who is the serial killer. I've watched like videos of his hotel, like being reconstructed, stuff about the, the true crime and you know his story so I've like I've consumed a lot of media about these two different elements already and I just don't feel like I'm learning anything new so I am bored as fuck I'm so sorry Aaron like I'm so sorry like please don't get angry at me <laughs> really really sorry Nikki I'm really 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 sorry I didn't realize that it was I'm sorry. <laughs> why are you laughing I want to love it and I don't really understand why I'm not but I am so bored like I'm sitting there like falling asleep and like wishing I was doing something else with my time. So, and like, it feels like to me, a lot of what is said about H.H. Holmes, it's like kind of made up. Like, I'm like, how do we actually know that? Like the serial killer? 
I'm like, mm, how are we sure? Like, it seems like a lot of hearsay, a lot of fictionalization for what is a non-fiction book. So I'm just not vibing. I'm gonna finish it for this video, but I know the rating is gonna be low. And please don't be mad at me if I very much skim read the rest of this, because I don't want to read it for much longer. So um, I'm not sure I'll have much to because I've properly sat and like really read the first half, the second half is not getting that treatment from me. I'm sorry, I can't do it. So when I come back to you, I'll probably just have a rating and a and a, a sad aura about me. I don't think I'll be able to say much, but I'm gonna finish it. But like, it's just not, it's just not giving what it wants to give. It, it's just not, I'm sorry. Listen, we don't even need to talk about it. We don't even need to talk about it. I don't really have anything to say. I read it, <laughs> I finished it. Can we just applaud me for that? Like. I, my god. Bored shitless! I finished it and I'm so sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. I'm giving it two stars. I'm giving it two stars. Listen, it just, the further this went on, <laughs> the more my thought and belief and assertion that this was just supposed to be a book about the Chicago affair was, <laughs> was validated. Like, there was hardly anything until right at the end when it was all about him. There was hardly anything about H.H. H. Jones, the serial killer. Like, we really forgot about him, apart from saying, Oh, he went to the fair. Did you know he went to the fair? Oh my god, can you believe it? He went to the fair. Like, come on. Come on. I do not care about these old men making business decisions about the fair. Here's the thing the fair is interesting. Right? I have, again, go watch, I'll try and remember to link the Defunct Land video on it. It's 20 minutes of your life. <laughs> this is not 20 minutes of my life. I find it an interesting topic, but it just, I was so bored. And listen, again, I need to assert that some of this may just be me and my problems. <laughs> And it may just have been a bit like wrong place, wrong time. Do you know what I mean? Like it just wasn't the right time for me to read this. And in another life, on another day, I would have enjoyed it. But I just, I just, I just did not give a fuck. I'm sorry. I did not care. I don't know. Maybe the problem was is that I already knew stuff about this. But like, surely I should, I should be interested to read more in depth about a topic I've already found interesting in the past. But like, I just didn't feel like it hit the right spot for me. And I don't really know why. And I don't want to talk about it because I'm very sad. And this is like, 10 hours of my life I'm not gonna get back. So that means, <laughs> that means at the end that Aaron had a total of nine points, which does put her in third place out of the three episodes we've done so far. I'm so sorry, Aaron. <laughs> I know you wanted to win. I didn't have the best luck with two of them. I'd say the mystery was enjoyable, but I didn't love it. Assassin's Apprentice, I really, really enjoyed. And that, I don't even wanna, I don't know why I didn't like that. <laughs> but I really, I was just so bored. I've never been so bored. This is, uh, I don't need, I feel like I need to justify why I was bored and I don't, but like, it doesn't make any sense why I was bored and didn't like it, but it's the fact. I can only say how I felt. So yeah, I'm sorry, Aaron, but thank you for letting me test out whether we're booktube twins. But in this case, we're not. In this case, we're not. In these three books, we weren't really booktube twins. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I love making these videos. Booktube twin tests are some of the most fun vlogs for me to do. There won't be one next month in December because we've got all of the Christmas content and vlogs coming. I've got so many Christmas vlogs planned. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten to the end comment a dog emoji because there's so many dogs in Assassin's Apprentice so many dogs um so comment a dog emoji if you've gotten to the end let me know any booktubers you would like to see on this in the future that you think could beat Kayla Riley and Aaron let me know that down in the comments as well and thank you so much I will see you very very soon in another video bye